Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. A little bit of a later wake up this morning, but I have coffee to, uh, to help me along with that. And I do wanna wish you the best, best in the haps taps before we get into this uh, nice little Saturday analysis. Gonna be checking out the weekly closures for CMEs, a little bit of traditional markets as well, and following up on the short-term timeframes for Bitcoin. But to kind of spoil the surprise, a little bit of sideways, a little bit of boringness, and some sandpaper ranges for you out there in the cryptocurrency world. Um, with that in mind, uh, what else do we wanna do? Yeah, I'll actually be uploading another video to the psychological playlist, maybe later tonight or tomorrow. Um, yeah, maybe tonight actually. Uh, I wanted to actually readdress that quantum, uh, that quantum concept that uh, we spoke about, I think on Monday or Tuesday of this past week. Uh, There's a really, really good conversation with a couple of people um, in the live streams and, uh, and I wanted to address that in a more dedicated manner where I feel like I was kind of more uh, cognitively less impaired <laughs> as that day. I was very, very much lacking sleep and uh, I don't think that I got it out in the, I don't think that I got those concepts out in the way that I really wanted them to. So I'll probably, I'll probably release that a little bit later. I actually just recorded it. And with that said, let's now put the folks on the CrownChain application, which can be found at app.crownchain.net. It is 100% free, by the way, so come and claim your free account or don't. Uh, we're actually going to be adding a lot to it in this next month. It looks like a lot of big updates, and so we're going to be able to uh, we're going to be able to offer like some pretty uh, some pretty pristine data, especially like directly from from CME, which you know uh, does uh, it's 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 kind of difficult to get, but we actually are able to get it, and we looks like we can actually disseminate that information as well with no issues, which is awesome. All right, cool. So on the dashboard, what do we see right here? We see the Bitcoin dominance still hanging around the 16.5%. We do see a range between about 16.5% and 61.5%. I do think that this is rather interesting though, because it does play into uh, my new sort of um, ideas here that we're seeing bifurcation within the altcoin sectors. It's no longer like it was in 2020 and prior where all altcoins were kind of treated equal or created equal. Now they're very much, you know, we, we have very much uh, bifurcated altcoin market, not even bifurcated, but like, you know, four, four levels, quad, quad, quadricated, if you want to call it that. Um, and, uh, and that's, and that's a sign and that's a signal of a maturing market, which is good. You know, the whole crypto market is kind of headed in the right direction. You know, every, everything is being more and more legitimized as time goes on Bitcoin, especially. And now we're seeing other ones being uh, brought up as well. Now the hot thing is like NFTs. Now, do I know anything about F NFTs? No, I don't. Do I know anyone who knows about uh, NFTs? Yeah. Elio trades, go check him out. He's the guy for that. Um, what else do we see? We do see that fear and greed index st uh, stuck at a 77. So the market is still somewhat greedy, somewhat optimistic and the open interest is uh, actually coming a little bit down from yesterday to today as we did play a little bit of a downside move now more or less just going sideways so i don't see anything out of the ordinary for there but it does more or less fit into the narrative of reaccumulation within this region we see clearly uh when we actually overlay the price chart right here and the open interest chart right here and the funny rate right chart right here this is all a reset i mean i feel very 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 strongly that this is reaccumulation um we even see michael saylor once again buying another 200 bitcoin or whatever the fuck and i need to take another sippy sip of this coffees Ooh, it's good it's real good <laughs> anyways um you know with uh, with, with price action more or less just kind of going sideways a little bit of downside while the opener cools off here as well essentially longs taking profits meaning that longs and bulas are still in control of this market and i don't really have any real reason to kind of flip around in that narrative especially as long as bitcoin's holding above uh forty five thousand for for fuck's sake but even forty thousand bucks i'd say uh, on top of that we do see that the funny rate has gone for a complete reset here too we can see that it's been downtrending as we identified ever since middle of february right here and that is more or less a good thing. You're no longer playing exor or you're no longer paying exorbitant fees to be holding those longs. And that's very interesting because look at this. When the funny rate, or sorry, when Bitcoin first got above fifty thousand bucks, the funny rate was uh, consistently above the not point one percent threshold, uh, of which I look at that as kind of like toppy top information. And what do you know? We put in a top not so far after that. Seeing as it ha as it's kind of now reset in the same way that we saw at the thirty thousand to forty thousand accumulation over here, I do look at this as a good thing long term doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin's going to have like a fucking girthy green dildo party like this second. No, but over time, I do look at this as very, 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 very healthy and very likely to try higher over time. Uh, but that but that but that time component ever so elusive as I make sure that I'm recording the microphone's working. That's good. All right. Excellent. Let me just turn off the desktop audio right there. I got some people to save in Divinity soon enough, too. So let's get through this one. Probably going to be a little bit of a shorter video because actually Elsa's having a party today um, with her friends for, I don't know, birthdays and shit. 
Nice. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, cool. Uh, Bitcoin funny rate per exchange. We do see that everyone's pretty much inconsequential. Bybit, uh, BitMEX, Huobi, Binance, all at 0.1%. Uh, everyone else very, very much muted, uh, pretty much below 0.3 or 0.4 for the most part, which is nothing. Uh, we've even seen the futures uh, premium over spot price action really dissipate since the $58,000 high right here. Again, another good reset signal uh, for the long term. Um, okay, cool. So we've got through that. I actually do want to check out what the biggest uh, gainers and losers from the last day were. Again, we see these fucking coins just going 20%, uh, you know, big, big days every goddamn day. Uh, over here, worst 10 coins. Worst 10 coins is usually uh, what was in the top 10 coins the day prior, I'm noticing, which is rather interesting. There, uh, You know what would be a really, really uh, interesting thing to do? Um, uh, like set up a bot that 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 watches the top 10 coins and whenever you see something that you know is is doing like what we see right here expect to see them in the next couple days uh in the top worst 10 coins usually so uh may, may you know maybe some easy trades there uh but i do think that it is rather uh rather compelling data i'm gonna take another sippy sip of this coffee because i'm almost done with it oh yeah and like I said, this video might be a little bit on the shorter side because um, we really don't have too much uh, new things to be spoken to be speaking about here. Go through the lower term time frames first for Bitcoin. We did hit, um, sorry, we did hit around our uh, what uh, what is this level right here? That the other four, uh, sorry, the two hundred simple and two hundred two hundred exponential average on the four hour. We're finding a nice little bouncy bounce right now. Do I think that this one does try a little bit higher? Um, probably yes. You know, I don't really have strong opinions on the short term time frames right now. We do see that momentum monsters are more or less all angled to the north side, with our four hour already popping back up. Three hours already there. Buy hourly is already there as well, and hourly is 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 uh, is kind of flip flopping around a little bit. But we do see that we do have a little bit of resistance coming within this region on the two hour. On the three hour, same uh, same thing. Uh, so wait, God, blah, 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 blah. Stop this. Stop this madness. You see, this one's going to be testing on the next tick or two. And the four hour is not quite there, but you can see the same sort of things uh, coming in. Anyways, my point is, is that what does that align with? A little bit of sideways, probably a little bit of up over the weekend. Um, but ultimately, I do not think that this range is done just yet. I know that a lot of people are going to call this an inverted head and shoulders right here. I don't believe that it is one, and I don't think it's going to act as one. But if it were to act as one, the breakout point for it would be the same for the range high thus far. And that would be this guy right here, 51,500-ish region, also along the two-spot extension from our last uh, our last, our, our last extension, uh, sorry, our last um, uh, uh, major accumulation region between 30,000 and 40,000 bucks. And this one's been working incredibly well. We can see that it matches up with the high at two spot 618 and uh, and getting the accumulation lows right here thus far as well between the 272 and the 414. So all of that's good stuff. Um, and uh, and while I do think that Bitcoin could maybe have a short term move back to the upside here, I think what's more likely uh, over this next um, couple of weeks is that Bitcoin does come back down, grind at the forty five thousand dollars level. But ultimately, as we had looked at in the underlying market dynamics, this does very, very likely turn into a major opportunity. Could Bitcoin come lower than that? Yes, I do think that it is certainly very much possible. Um, I've beaten this fucking horse to death as well, but I'll just briefly bring it up right here. Looking at the monthly, we do see that the monthly uh, anytime that it has closed above the top side trolling band has always, always, always one. 100% of the time, always come down and test the, the top side of the trollinger band. So in this case, on the monthly, that would be at around 40,000 bucks. If we were to go to the buy monthly, which by the way, has the exact same signature here, that would be about 39,000 bucks. As you can see, and there's two ways that this can happen that where uh, where where price action actually tests the top side Toronto band, either it literally comes down to test it, you know, so that would, that that would, that would include a move down to like the low 40,000 bucks or Bitcoin just gets so green that it gets pulled up because it is a reactive indicator, obviously, and that would probably happen at around 60,000 bucks. Now, I do look at the monthly as uh, insanely bullish here. We see MACD histogram continuing to increase the momentum. Pretty fucking impressive right there. And uh, ADX DMI also putting in some bullish signals here, too. Obviously, DMI plus is very very much dominant. ADX is uh, pretty damn strong. However, uh, <laughs> you know you don't really see it. Uh, this actually does correlate pretty well with uh, with major highs. When the ADX gets into this region here, above the 90 read especially, you can see that we still have a little bit more to go as we are just under 80 uh, right now. And that would take time, obviously, as every month is, or sorry, every tick is one month. So, you know, it'd still take at least a few months if it even is going to hit that region. And I'm going to polish off this damn coffee right now. Do you like my Star Wars cup? It's really nice. <laughs> it's got uh, Chewbacca on it. It's good. It gets me in the mood, baby. In the right mood. <laughs> Anyways, um, going back on over here, you know, I, you know, so I, I, I do want to get that out because I do think that Bitcoin uh, is is a lot more likely to actually test the downside of the range. Uh, sorry, downside of the range here, probably in the next week or two. Uh, uh, I mean, the next coming week or two, uh, that is, and uh, and whether it's forty five thousand bucks or comes all the way down to about thirty nine thousand bucks right here. 
either is fine for me. I, I do think that there's big opportunities at both levels, and you can probably figure out what the fuck I'm trying to do around those levels as well. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. But I do more or less look at this as, you know, I, I think that this is very obviously reaccumulation right here. Um, all right, so we were already went over four hour stokes. What about four hour RSI? Neutral, new, you know, a little bit of sideways, a little bit of upside. Three hour, what do we see right here? Same shit. Uh, neutral, sideways and up a little bit. Uh, Buy hourly, same shit. Actually, did play it a little bit of hidden bearish evidence, but that move already went from 49.5 to, yeah, 48. So that's a $1,500 move. Yeah, I think that that one's mostly played out. And then the hourly right here, a couple things to say as, again, same, same thing on RSI, you know, sideways and actually a little bit of downside on that one. Um, but, uh, we do see that HVP is actually incredibly low right now. So I would expect to move over the weekend. In this case, uh, the lower term timeframes actually do favor a little bit of short term upside. How high can we get? I, I think anywhere, uh, anywhere around 50,000 bucks is completely fine. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily be looking for a breakout. And of course, uh, could a breakout happen? I mean, yes, I, I think it's a I, I think it's a lot less likely. But if I were to be looking for one, what would be the criteria for that? It needs to break above the prior range high on a four-hour closure, and that's about fifty-one thousand five hundred-ish region. What does a buy early look like? Same level. So you know, could I use a buy early for this? Yes. Uh, technically speaking, though, I would not consider this whole uh, reaccumulation range resolved and meaning like test of the test of the prior time highs and then very likely implying new all time highs with the next targeted region uh, based off the three spot extension right here at about 62,000 bucks. Intel Bitcoin does one of two things, closes a daily above uh, 54,000 bucks or closes a four hour above uh, 55,000 bucks right here. If you can do one of those two things, uh, then yes, I would be looking for to enter into trending motion once again. But for now, uh, short term time frames, a little bit of sideways, maybe a little bit of upside. But ultimately, I don't think that Bitcoin is breaking to the upside here. I think very, very likely we'll see another test back down to the bottom side of the range. And uh, and very likely the bottom side of the range does hold as we do see some really constructive behavior within this region. Um, moving on to the medium term time frames, what do we see right here? We do see more or less the same shit. Uh, 12 hour stokes turning back down, which is not good actually, as it is as it is clearly rejecting the bullish control zone. So any sort of a short term move to the upside here, I do think gets pushed back. If Bitcoin got to like 50,000 bucks, I'd, you know, I'd look at that as very likely, uh, very likely to push back around that region, maybe even right now. I, I, I do think that um, uh, especially especially this coming week, we do see another test back down to the lows. Um, 12 hour RSI, a little bit of sideways, a little bit of down. Um, long term, constructive, good. Long term, very constructive, very good, actually. Uh, but and even I'd love to see this area tested once again, too. If it came all the way back down there on this 12 hour RSI uh, trend line, and that would imply, yeah, a little bit of sideways, a little bit of down, um, but ultimately, uh, you know, bouncing off the edge of the bull, uh, sorry, bearish control zone in this case, I would be looking at that once again as an opportunity. So uh, that would imply a little bit of downside though. So don't, you know, don't get it twisted there. Um, but I'm, I'm not calling a breakdown here. And of course, you know, if we are going to be looking for a breakdown and looking for those uh, 39000 to $40,000 prices, I would still be using the same sort of pivot that I identified uh, about a week ago, even though there was a bit of a fake out there. Of course, probably better to use a daily in this case, and that would be the 44400 ish level on a four-hour closure or 45000 bucks on a 12-hour or daily closure. Whichever one of those two happens, things, uh, two things happens first. We actually would have a target uh, based off the measure move back down to the 786, so good confluence right there, at about 39000 bucks. And that does line up with what we looked at on the monthly as well. So I do, I, I would absolutely love that region to be fair. Um, does that mean that we're going to get it? There is no guarantees, obviously, but you know, you can see that there's a very obvious setup right there and it kind of plays into all of those uh, time frame analyses. Anyways, moving on to the daily, what do we see? Holding above all major moving outs for now, uh, which is okay, I suppose. Daily stokes, uh, technically pointed up and actually, uh, no, nothing else to say about that. Um, daily RSI, what do we see right here? We did play out the hidden bullish divergence. I mean, that was the move from 45 all the way to, yeah, 52 and a half. So uh, I'd say that that's uh, relevant to say that's already played, played out. I mean, $7,000 move is pretty fucking nice. Um, uh, but again, you know, I, I, I think the daily is quite obvious with an actual range here. Um, let's see. What about the buy daily? Buy daily stokes coming down. Now they are starting to they are starting to lessen in their momentum here, as you can see. And we actually do have this trend line. Uh, coming in from our last major lows from September, that was about 10,000 bucks. And then of course, more recently in late uh, January right here, this one comes around this region. That actually would be a test of the neutral zone. And I probably would be looking for a bounce there. That also would imply a little bit of short-term downside, however. <clears throat> and I think, you know, in, a, in, in and I think the uh, moving averages here are, are pretty damn compelling. 10 simple to the upside versus 21 exponential move to, to the downside. There's your range for right now. Very, 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 very bluntly put. Um, Three-day, same sort of thing. I, I would absolutely love to see a test towards the 21 exponential average 
no promises on that one and same thing for for three day stokes here we do see it is turning down right now but we do have this trend line coming in which probably does get hit around the next tick and that actually is protecting right around the edge of the bullish control zone so that actually would be a good thing long term um now on the other side obviously we do have bearish divergence here and uh, we even have a three-day jewel sell signal which i do think is a little bit concerning and the three-day jewel sell signal by the way on cme it's not present on uh, on spot price action still looking pretty damn good to me i want to see the next tick which is going to be monday actually yeah so monday um if we see this turn down again uh, extremely likely we see it play off um hey what the fuck's going on over here hey what the fuck is this oh well whatever <laughs> all right cool um, and, and naturally speaking, your target would be the 21 and that is guess where low 40,000 bucks. So I, I do still think that there's a good, um, a, you know, you know, a good, a good chance that we should do see that level hit. But again, I'd be looking at it as an opportunity, um, at least on the first pass for a very nice bounce after that, you know, game on of course, but, um, but you know, the market doesn't happen in one day. So I'd give it a chance. Um, anyways, uh, with the, with the weekly closure coming tomorrow, do we have anything else to be uh, aware of here? Um, okay. So here's actually, here's, here's probably the more immediately bullish case. Okay. Couple things. Uh, first off weekly momentum oscillators, uh, look like they're very likely to cross the upside here. Uh, I, I believe that they will naturally speaking with any sort of a closure here or higher. And then coming into next week, we potentially could identify hidden bullish divergence on the other side between this point, this low right here at about 32,000 bucks and this potential low right here. Now, is this confirmed low as it is right now? No. Will it confirm this as a low? Well, if you were paying attention during the fucking lower term timeframes, then you, then it would actually be the exact same area as, uh, well, especially even just taking to the high of this would confirm this as local low. Uh, but any sort of a daily close, uh, sorry, any sort of a four hour closure above uh, 51, 500 ish region. And then, yes, this will be considered a higher low. And with that in mind, we'd have hidden bullish divergence, pretty aggressive right there, too. And that imply move back up to the highs and very likely new all time highs as Bitcoin continues trending. At the same time, does that mean that Bitcoin can't come back down to 45,000 bucks? No, in fact, I'd still be looking for the to happen. Um, but I'd be looking for a bounce there on the backfill. That's what I'd be looking for. And if, if that were the case. So, again, a couple different major um, uh, uh, routes of action here but uh, all of them kind of do line up with each other which i think is rather good so that will obviously be clarified tomorrow on closure uh as far as this one goes and that offers up the opportunity for next week so at least take another week ten well it could it could happen next week is what i'm saying if you know if you actually do get the next signal um so it's it's not happening today again uh, i don't think that bitcoin breaks the range either which way to the upside or the downside like today uh so to speak okay um what else do we got uh, do we want to keep on this? Okay, we're already about 17 minutes into this one. Um, like I said, I do want to make this one a little bit on the shorter side. Uh, things to do today. What about CME closure? How did this one uh, look like on... Um on Friday, pretty good closure actually. Uh, kind of hard to hate this chart. In fact, this one's a lot more bullish immediately than not. Uh, this would be, yeah, this is actually really fucking good right here. You can see that we're even testing this trend line from not just September. Wow, this one's coming from way, way downtown. Yeah, this is March, uh, March trend line. So this is coronavirus dump times from literally a year ago, connected with our September ten thousand uh, dollars reaccumulation low, connected with our January thirty thousand dollar accumulation low, and then once again going to be hitting that region uh, on the next tick. Um, it will, it will be hitting that. It's already kind of curling up uh, alongside holding the 21 x benchmark average. I mean, I really, really like this actually right here. In fact, I'm glad that I looked at this because it actually does certainly switch my bias to uh, bullish in this next coming week. Again, can I be bullish with Bitcoin coming back down to 45,000 bucks? Yes, I can. In fact, that would just be like, a, in my opinion, a major opportunity. Once again, I feel like I'm repeating myself because I probably am. Anyways, um, what about the lower term timeframes right here? Uh, yeah, uh, see me very, very good closure on Friday. So over the weekend, typically we do see a little bit of a little bit of fuckery going both upside and downside. Uh, I don't really care for the weekend moves, but um, you know, seeing as this did close on a nice uptick on Friday, I actually do look at this as you know any sort of a downside move over the weekend likely does get picked up. If 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 we get another move down to like 45, ooh baby, I like that. I like that a lot actually. Um, all right, let's go check out traditional marks really quick. NASDAQ uh, closing the week a little bit on an, well, I wouldn't say it closed the week on an uptick, but it closed the day a little bit on, a, on an uptick. I still look at this though as likely another lower high. Uh, now we almost did hit our downside targets. However, uh, I was saying about 12,100 ish region. We got all the way down to 12.2 yesterday um, on Friday. Bless you, sir. And uh, in front running, that target is, is completely fine. I mean, I mean, it's really not that far off. And it was more like 12,150 anyways. So 50 bucks off that target is, is a very, 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 very small move. I would say that that's actually been hit. And I'd be looking for this one to trade higher, uh, open or sorry, open higher uh, into uh, Monday. Probably test somewhere around about 13,000 bucks. 
and then game on once again. Um, if it can actually break above 13,000 bucks, and I'd really start to look at this as likely to pop back up around the prior highs, uh, at least 13,500, and that's gonna start to look really fucking good there. So I'm actually not, um, I, I do think that it's relevant to say that this move actually could have already played out here. We did see the bearish divergence uh, that, uh, that, you know, that, that target's already been hit. We did see our pattern target pretty much hit. I mean, that's close enough in this case. So I'd actually be looking for this one to, uh, to trade higher here. Um, and and uh, and open up on an uptick um, coming into or sorry if this one by the way it would be a classic move this one actually comes back down fills tw uh, 12 400 and then bounces off there that would be actually the nice play uh, we see momentum also is looking like they want to turn up as well and we do see that uh, lower term time frames while they probably do play a little bit of downside um, maybe in like Monday or something, that's very likely to be an opportunity. Uh, Spy Futures, same shit, actually doesn't even have that same sort of sell, or sorry, that same sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, questionable close. On Friday, and I'd be looking at this one, yeah, uh, very, very likely, very, very likely to pop back up towards 3,900 bucks uh, over this next week or two. Daily Stokes crossing back up here too. Uh, rejection of the bearish control zone, by the way. Same thing on daily RSI. I mean, this is pretty fucking good stuff right there. Uh, on increasing HVP, so we see expansion with price action putting in a bit of reversal. I mean, this is even a... Uh, technically not, it's, it, or sorry, technically it's not a bear, uh, bullish engulfing, but it it's 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 gonna act like one. I strongly uh, I, I strongly believe that. If we go over here to spy, yeah, there you go. Uh, pretty fucking good. And what about uh, whoops? What about Dow Jones? Oh wow, even better, even but be wow, wow. Th this one's extremely likely to, to retest the prior all-time high and probably make new all-time highs. There, there's your higher low. There's your fucking higher low right there. Uh, uh, Stokes turning back up. Yep, I think that we've seen the correction now. How 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 low did we get here? Is it a ten percent correction? 5% on uh, on Dow Jones. What about NAS? I think NAS was my 10% one. Yep, uh, actually just under 12%. So pretty damn good there too. So I, you know, I do like this actually quite a fair bit. And uh, and I'll be looking for bounces to continue into next week. And does this you know bode well for Bitcoin? Uh, seeing as all these major markets are correlated with each other, it does. So you know, do we see those lower $40,000 regions? It's looking less and less likely now. Forty-five thousand bucks, I think, is still very much possible. And uh, and I'd still be looking at that as a big opportunity. So fair enough. All right, what else do we want to check out? Maybe maybe Mr. Budar really quickly. Uh, where is my damn Ethereum's? Where is my damn Ethereum's for real? Sir, where are you at? Hey, actually, where are you? There we go. <laughs> 1590. Um, same thing here. Yes, uh, in this one, actually looking a little bit better short term. Uh, I'd be looking for uh, I'd be looking for a little bit of an upside move here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, somewhere around the 200 simple, actually. Uh, that's going to be your range highs as well at about 1669. Great number right there. Uh, let's actually mark this one off. Pretty damn simple chart, actually. So this one, this one's actually quite uh, relevant just because it's a lot more obvious than Bitcoin, I'd say. Um, you know, if, if Bitcoin does want to play a downside move, I'd be looking for opportunities down here at about 1420. Great number as well in 1669 to the upside. That would be a breakage of the range. And, you know, at that point, I'd be looking for a quick test somewhere around just below 1800 bucks and then very likely continuation and applied after, uh, you know, after that target is met, um, at, you, know, at, you know, after a little bit of a pullback around that region. Uh, but ultimately, I, you know, I do like this short term. Um, and this actually does help out the short term bias on Bitcoin uh, moving to the upside, maybe around 50,000 bucks. Do I think that's actually going to break it today? No, I don't. I, I think it probably pushes back around that level. If it were to happen today, that is. Uh, anything else that I want to speak about here? Um, no, I think I think we'll I think we'll cut it off there. Actually, uh, looking at um, caretaker ranges, pretty much the exact same. Actually, yeah, showing about fifty thousand uh, to the upside, um, but that's on an hourly, so that will move. So let's see what the four hour says. Four hours in line with our last prior high, actually fifty thousand bucks. Interesting, very very interesting. Um, but either which way, it, it does suggest that we actually do test a little bit of upside here. We can see that uh, HVP in an expansive posturing as momentum's turning up. Yeah, this is a bull zone consolidation. Yeah, I, I imagine it's going to test this region, probably even push it a bit too, and then we can actually uh, see a move, maybe you know, li likely above fifty thousand bucks. So short term, a little bit of upside. Do I think this can actually break the range? Probably not. Probably does reject, comes back down into range, gives another try at the low, and then and then game on you know somewhere around this the middle of this next week if i had to guess although time analysis is not really something that i think can accurately be done uh, but all this looks pretty damn good right now so i think that's uh that's it for today uh no wrap up because i think that it's uh it's pretty damn i think you know i think it's pretty damn clear now in in the last week it's been more or less the same you know side boost within a range i think we've got the downside i think we've got the upside pretty damn well now pretty much the same thing <laughs> so with that said i do want to wish you the best best and the happiest nice little setup for this week to come and until next time